My friend Ann Coulter, syndicated columnist and best-selling author of so many books, including most recently, Resistance is Futile, joins me now. Ann, welcome back to the program. Thanks. Good to be here, Lars. Uh, It's good to have you on. So what do you think of Michael Cohen's conviction and sentence? He's going off to prison for three years. Is this a big deal? Um, Well, it is for Michael Cohen and apparently anyone who has any connection to Trump. I don't know if you saw the attorney general, incoming attorney general of New York, has just announced she will be pouring over the lives of Trump, his family, any of his friends and associates, which um, you may be familiar with our system of law, Lars. (laughs) It isn't supposed to be the way criminal law works. You find the crime and then prosecute the crime. You do not... um, just search the lives of specific people unless you're a Republican president and get an independent counsel. Um, but for one thing, you must you must have resistance is futile for the next two years. Everything, everything that is coming will be explained quite simply with all the references you need to know. Um, my section on Michael Cohen and the charges against him, this business with the hush money to the, the alleged mistresses um, slash grifters, um, because I don't think I don't think we know <laughs> whether whether there were any sexual trysts. Not that I think um, Donald Trump was elected based on the fact that people thought he was a man of great moral rectitude. Um, but I, I, I actually don't believe either of them for various reasons. But let be that as it may. I put that in chapter 19 of my book. Now, they're very short chapters because I'm part of the Twitter generation <laughs> and have a short attention span. But still, if Mueller had been looking into Trump for a jaywalking charge, that would have come closer to the front of the book. That's how silly a campaign finance charge is. So flash back to, oh, that's right, my first book, High Crimes and Misdemeanors. When Clinton was president, um, Chinese foreigners were not allowed to, as you probably all know now, not allowed to donate to American campaigns, were literally dragging duffel bags of money to the DNC. This was well reported. Everyone knew no independent counsel, no demands for an independent counsel, um, nothing at all. Um, we, the, the Clinton White House, of course, you're not allowed to have campaign fundraisers on federal property. Um, Clinton White House we, were having fundraisers right in the White House. Those coffees, the famous coffees, the famous teas. Um, videotapes later came out showing, again, mostly Chinese nationals handing checks in the White House to White House staff. Janet Reno appoints no independent counsel. The New York Times lightly ribs the Attorney General, Janet Reno, um, for not doing anything. We're just, oh, her blunders on campaign finance. Now, those are big, fat, stinking campaign finance violations. If those are laws this country takes seriously, we do not. They They are like no smoking signs in Paris speeding signs on a back road in New Hampshire. They're posted for our amusement, but they are not actually taken seriously. Now we have <laughs> a payment. What, what is particularly striking about um, the two felonies, two felonies, two felonies you keep hearing about, um, you'll notice you will not get details about these, what, what Michael Cohen had pled, has pled guilty to. No details, just felonies. He's, uh, he says he's implicated the president. Well, one of the hush money payments was to Karen McDougal, the Playboy Bunny. Um, I don't think it was ever paid, but an agreement was struck with David Pecker of the National Enquirer. This is what Cohen has pled guilty to. Yep. An agreement struck um, that, that, that Pecker, on behalf of the National Enquirer, would pay something like $130,000 for Karen McDougal's story, would investigate and then would not print. That's that's what the allegation is anyway. Um, catch and kill. You've probably heard that over and over again. I have. Um, according to the sentencing memo itself, uh, that agreement was struck in August 2014. Well, Trump didn't come down the escalator and declare for president until June 2015. So whether or not it's a campaign violation or the government has any business asking a publisher of the most read newspaper in America, the National Enquirer, why he chose to run or not run a particular story. I think we have a First Amendment that would prevent that. Absolutely right. Ann Coulter is with us. Resistance is futile is her most recent book.